Howdy folks, welcome back to the channel. So on today's episode, I'm getting ready. It's actually a bit of a somber day around here because I'm getting ready to store my cars for the winter months. And I always kind of dread this time of year because it means you don't get to enjoy them, at least not from behind the wheel uh, for a handful of months. And I'm forced to, right? I live up here in Canada and I don't drive these cars in the winter months. Not a lot of people do up here. So they get tucked away and tucked in and kept warm. Well, at least in my case, I keep mine warm. So what I wanted to do, guys, is I wanted to run you through how I store my cars. Now, I think that this information applies to just storage in general. Um, now, like I say, in particular, in my case, I store them because it's cold outside. But even if you're storing your car in a warmer climate, this information will apply. So. Uh, I thought I'd run you through my process as to how I go about doing that and hopefully it uh, helps some of you guys. There's actually some stuff I want to touch on too, just keep this in the back of your mind so you don't miss it, but there's some stuff I want to touch on that it's my, my opinion as to why you should or shouldn't do something, but uh, anyway, take it for what it's worth, I'll get to that in a minute here. So um, first things first, what I do is I get some decent quality kind of local parts store uh, fuel stabilizer okay now one of these bottles in this size format treats a full tank in a fox okay and uh, I think this is for this goes for all fuel stabilizers but um, it's you can't use too much of it if that makes sense like they've always got their recommendations for how much a bottle will treat but it's more for treating not enough fuel than it is too much so or pardon me it's more about treating too much fuel than not enough so that'll treat and sorry this is Canadian terminology but that'll treat 76 liters and one of these tanks is 60 so I just pour the whole bottle in um, essentially you can't use too much of it so full bottle of that and then what I do is uh, I run down to my local fuel station Here's what we're paying for fuel around here, guys. Buck 70 a liter. Absolutely outrageous. Over a hundred bucks to fill a tank on a Fox body. Uh, I've, I've got one not too far from me here that I can get 94 octane, so I top it up with some good quality high octane fuel. And now the reason that I do that is because um, I'll link to my video here for you guys. Now, this car, this is just my, my forensic uh, background check that I did on it I believe was stored way before I got it but it was stored for an extended period of time without a full tank of fuel in it and now what happens when you do that is essentially you give humidity the opportunity to build up between your fuel line and the top of your tank and humidity equals water and water equals rust this car was in actually really dire straits from a fuel system perspective my fuel pump was rusted actually it was so bad it was kicking the relay which was giving me codes and shutting the car down it was awful essentially what if you're not filling that tank up you're given humidity and opportunity to build up and ultimately rust your fuel system out so not good anyway so i run my cars down to the local fuel station I fill them up and now what I the theory behind this is well I give the fuel stabilizer a chance to slosh around and mix up and get in the lines um, and then get my uh, get my tank filled up and then I also you know get my car up to temp before I go to store it which actually kind of leads me into another little point that I want to make I may as well make it now I don't start my cars while I store them okay I, I literally park them and leave them until I'm gonna start them the next time for in this case it's the spring for me and now again it's my opinion and I, I know everybody's got one on this but my thought on it and maybe I'll just say to I understand why people start their cars in storage times okay I get it lubricate the seals get the oil to the top of the motor and all that good stuff okay now I think the cost of doing that outweighs the benefit and there's here's why 
if you're just going to start your car and let it idle in a garage all you do is create moisture in that motor and the full exhaust system essentially you're going cold metal parts and you're adding a whole pile of heat to it and it just sits there and it'll get itself up the temp but it just essentially the motor doesn't get a chance to clear itself out and or the tailpipes and the mufflers and all that good stuff clear any of the moisture out that gets created from cold starting that car or truck or whatever so if you're going to start your car here's something to keep in the storage months here's something to keep in the back of your mind try to do it on a day where you can actually get it out for a little drive and get it up to temperature run it a little bit and clear as much of that moisture out as possible Okay, that's about the only way that I can figure that a person should start their car when it's being stored. Because if you don't, moisture. And moisture is a killer. Okay, so in my opinion, uh, I don't really get the opportunity once it starts snowing here, I'm done till spring. So I don't get the opportunity to drive them around. So I just don't start my cars. Okay, and it's for those reasons. Uh, you Moisture, yeah, kills these cars. So... I'll take my chances with the dry start in the spring. Um, you know, if you're really worried about it, you could always pull the distributor out, spin your oil pump over, get oil to the top of the motor. I use a good quality oil uh, that's pretty sticky. And the way I see it is, for me, the cost outweighs the benefit. So I don't start my cars in the storage months, okay? Obviously disconnect your battery. Uh, if you're leaving it like I do here in a, in a heated shop area, um, I'd leave the battery in the car. I'll charge the battery up just so it's got a, a good solid fresh charge on it before I store the car and then uh, I'll leave it disconnected until I go to fire it up in the spring. Um, I'll also change the oil, get rid of whatever summer contaminants that you may have kicking around in the in the oil there and give it a fresh uh, fresh lube. When I change the oil I always, well I, I change it while it's pseudo warm and then I uh, fire it up you know run it through the engine get it everywhere it needs to go build pressure and stuff and then uh, from there uh, well yeah maybe take it for one last little cruise tuck it away and push it against the wall or whatever you're gonna do and yeah just give it a good once over right check things out uh, make sure that you know there's nothing pressing uh, or if there is when you go to start store your car now's a pretty good time to to look at working on them and you don't have to worry about oh you know I want to go to a car show but it's these months that you can really get into the bigger projects right one more thing and now this is kind of new to me but this car uh, I got these tires and wheels for those of you that have been following along I got these tires and wheels off a fella locally and I've never had these Toyo tires always wanted them but could never afford them and uh, anyway they're the R or triple eight R's Toyo in the rear and then they're a R1R in the front. Now Toyo, this gets a little bit over my head and gets me out over my ski tips here, but uh, as far as the, the science of this is concerned. But anyway, um, the compound that these guys use, because they're more of a, a like a race tire, track type tire, the compound I guess is, is very susceptible to um, temperature changes and humidity and all this stuff and apparently if you park your car on a flat spot like this for extended periods of time, I don't know if maybe it's not as bad if it's in a warmer climate controlled area or not, but anyway, uh, you can develop flat spots in them. I don't worry about my green car, um, <clears throat> these tires full disclosure are fairly cheap and uh, easily to get so these ones however are not especially these days with all the whatever supply chain shortages and stuff but apparently it's best to get the car up and off the ground or at least get the wheels up and off the ground whether you take them off or whatever you do but and just to avoid having flat spots in them now i don't know if i'm going to go to all that trouble i might just take my chances and well, I'll report back in the spring to you guys and let you know. Maybe I'll be the test dummy on whether or not I ruin these tires. I can't really see ruining them, but I don't know. If anyone from Toyo is watching, maybe you can uh, correct me on this. Um, and apparently they've got something on their website that talks all about this, how to store these tires. And yeah, brand new, they're not cheap. So maybe it's not a bad idea to do something with them. But anyway, that's something to consider too, right? Maybe you get in your car up and off the ground. 
But uh, that is pretty much it, guys. The soup to nuts situation of how I winterize my cars. Um, now, again, I, I, I think this applies to anyone storing a car in a wa warmer climate or colder climate. The same rules that I'm using apply. This car, the, uh, the Red Vert, I do have some plans for this winter. Um, so it will somewhat go onto the knife. I'm hoping, I know a lot of you guys have been asking me that I can get this car to my mom by the spring. I mean, really, I could get it to her at any time, but I think she's going to want a little bit of an exhaust system and, and stuff like that on her, right? So I want to do that, and I've been buying the parts. Uh, I just need a cap back, but whatever. That's a story for another time. Um, so yeah, this one will get some work done to it. And uh, the green one, well, she's just going to sit under the cover and have a nice little sleep. Again, I mentioned in my last video, lots more is gonna be coming at the shop. I got some really cool projects coming that I think you guys are gonna enjoy. Um, one of which is a, a pretty wild Mustang project, Fox. Uh, I don't wanna give away too much of the details, but the uh, the heart that's gonna go in that Fox is is pretty wild. I, I I think I only know of one other person that's that's attempted this. I'm sure there's more that just aren't out and about on the web but um, anyway uh, it, it's the only one that I know of personally up here and like I say I only know of one person in the states that's done this before so that should be pretty cool um, got some non Mustang related stuff for those of you that enjoy that type of content too but uh, anyway I'll keep you posted on all that and I've been busy cleaning that place up and getting it set up, so shortly here I'll give you guys all a, a tour. And hey, uh, just on a sidebar here, side note, I wanted to say thank you very much guys. I, like A lot of you reached out and, and congratulated me and um, you guys are always so kind, really. And, and I don't mean to gush, but I, I think a lot of you deserve it. Um, as I say all the time, I love chatting with you guys and I really appreciate all the kind words that you say and uh, it means a lot to me honestly gets me uh almost makes me misty so anyway thanks for tagging along guys thanks for being part of this and uh as long as you guys are enjoying it i'll keep doing it so anyway um that's gonna be enough for this one guys so thanks for tagging along and i will catch you on the next one for all of you out there that are storing your cars for the winter i feel for you i'm doing it too but anyway hope this information helps you guys so thanks a lot i'll catch you on the next one guys take care bye for now